Welcome to this challenge. There are 10 MCQs based on your entire syllabus. Let's test our knowledge and check whether we are ready for the board exams. I hope you get all correct. Let's start. Question 1 says that firm A hires the services of Rohan Mittal to act as the brand ambassador for its commodity X. Identify the nature of market for commodity X. Now the options given us given to us are these four types of markets. What do you think is the correct answer? I'll give you a second. Did you get it right? The correct answer would be monopolistic competition. Let's understand why. Now the firm hiring someone, hiring Rohan Mittal as a brand ambassador is an example of advertising, which is a common strategy used in monopolistic competition. Brand ambassadors, they help create certain emotional connection with the audience. Audience feels connected to them and which increases the brand value of the product and which leads to more sales. So this is why this is your correct option, monopolistic competition. I hope this is clear. Question 2. Now this is assertion reason based question. This is something ICSE has introduced recently. So you may not get too many to practice. Please pay attention. When you look at first statement, you have to look whether the statement is true or false. And the second statement will tell you whether this second statement is an explanation of the first statement or not. So let's try one. And the options you will get usually are like this. That A is true, R is false, A is false, but R is true. Or both A and R are true, R explains A like that. So let's analyze. First statement is goods and services, taxes and indirect tax. It's true, isn't it? GST is a type of indirect tax where it is collected by the business and paid to the government, but the burden of the tax is ultimately borne by the consumer. GST is an indirect tax. It satisfies the definition of indirect tax. Now let's understand the reason. The reason given is that the impact and the incidence of tax are on two different persons. That's also true. The impact. Impact means it's impact of the tax. It refers to who is legally responsible for paying it. So in our case, the seller is legally responsible for paying it. And the term incidence of tax means it refers to who actually bears the burden, which is consumer in our case. So in the case of GST, Businesses collect the tax from customers and remit it to the government, making it an indirect tax where the impact and incidence are on different persons. So since R is explaining correctly that why GST is an indirect tax, the correct answer would be this one. Both A and R are true and R explains A. I hope this is clear and I hope you understand how you are going to solve them step by step. Now let's move to the third question. Third question says, which factor out of the following serves as the primary source of consumption? The options given to us are land, labor, capital and entrepreneur. Now these are all factors of production. So which factor serves as the primary source of consumption? What do you think is the correct answer? What is consumption? Consumption refers to the use of goods and services to satisfy human wants. Now among these four factors of production, obviously we can understand that labor would be the source of consumption, primary source of consumption because labor, labor includes all workers, all individuals. They are the ones who will earn wages which they use to produce goods and services, to purchase goods and services. And households primarily, they compose of labor and they are the main consumers in an economy. Other factors, they do contribute to the production, but they are not the primary agents of consumption. Only labor should be the correct answer. This question is fourth question. When will a demand curve take the shape of a rectangular hyperbola? I hope you all understand the term what is rectangular hyperbola. Rectangular hyperbola means that the area of any rectangle drawn below that curve is same. That's a mathematical property of a rectangular hyperbola. Now, what are the options given to us? 
elasticity of demand is equal to zero, elasticity of demand is greater than one, elasticity of demand is less than one, and elasticity of demand is equal to one. So we said that a rectangular hyperbola shaped demand curve will represent where your total expenditure, the area of that rectangle, price into Q, quantity will remain constant despite any change in price and quantity. Now this will happen when your price elasticity of demand equals 1, meaning the percentage change in quantity demanded is exactly equal to the percentage change in price. If price increases, quantity demanded decreases proportionally, keeping total revenue constant. So this characteristic is also known as unitary elastic demand, which takes the shape of a rectangular hyperbola. Now the next question is increase in price leading to an increase in supply shows what? The options given to us are downward movement, leftward shift, upward movement, or rightward shift. I hope these concepts are very clear to you because you will definitely get a question on this. Now here, remember that when there is change in demand or supply due to change in price, then we are talking about movement along the same curve. And when there is a change in demand or supply due to factor any other factor other than price, then we are talking about shifts in the demand or supply curve. Now here in this case, we are talking about increase in price leading to an increase in supply. It means it's a price change. If there's a price change, automatically the answer has to be movement along the curve. So here we are saying increase in price leading to increase in supply. So the answer would be upward movement along the supply curve. I'm sure you must have got this. So the correct answer is upward movement along the supply curve. Now let's do question number six. This is again assertion reason question. Assertion is the coefficient of price elasticity of demand is always negative and the reason is the negative sign represents the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. Now these are the options given to us. What do you think is the correct answer? Let's understand. When you read the assertion, the coefficient of price elasticity of demand is always negative. This is true. Price elasticity of demand measures how quantity demanded responds to price changes. Now, when we calculate this mathematically, this relationship results in a negative value for price elasticity of demand because it's always like that if price goes up, demand goes down or vice versa. The reason given is that the negative sign represents the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. Yes, it shows that negative relation, which is a fundamental to demand theory. So this option of first option, both A and R are true and R is the correct explanation of A. That would be the correct answer. This is another important question you must do. Which of the following is an impact due to an increase in CRR on loanable funds? And the options given to us are these, that whether loanable funds will decrease, they will increase, or there will be no change, or commercial banks will reduce restrictions on loans. So if you remember correctly, what is CRR? CRR is the percentage of a bank's total deposits that must be kept as reserves with the central bank. Example, RBI on, in India. Now, when CRR increases, what does it mean? That the banks are required to hold more money as reserves. This will reduce the amount of money available for lending. So we know the correct option would be loanable funds will decrease. This will make, this will restrict the credit availability in the economy. So correct choice is loanable funds will decrease. Pay attention to these type of questions. They need your, they require your understanding of the concept. Now let's do question 8. An inflation caused by an increased wage of labor is? This is something you can do even without the options, isn't it? The answer would be cost push inflation. Why? Cost push inflation occurs when the cost of production rises, leading to an increase in the overall price level. One major cause of cost push inflation is 
higher wages as labor costs are a significant part. Now, when wages increase, what do firms do? They pass on the higher cost to consumers by raising prices, causing inflation. And if you look at the other options, they anyway are not due to wage increase. Demand pull inflation is when demand exceeds supply. Hyperinflation is totally something different, which is out of control inflation. And galloping inflation is, which is very high inflation, above 10%, but not uncontrollable inflation. So the correct option is cost push inflation. Question 9. Under dash, each firm produces a considerable proportion of the total output. Now, what are the options given to us? These are different types of markets. Now, this is a little tricky question. Just don't be in a hurry. Now, under dash, each firm produces a considerable proportion of the total output. What do you think is the correct answer? If you look at perfect competition, you have many small firms. They exist, each producing a rather insignificant portion of the total output. They are price takers, isn't it? They cannot affect Firms cannot affect the prices in the market or they don't have that considerable proportion of the total output. What about monopoly? Monopoly is a single firm. It dominates rather the entire market. It will produce all of the total output, not considerable proportion of the total output. Then we have mon monopolistic competition. Here you have many firms exist, but each firm has a very small share of the total market. Now, what is the other option? Oligopoly. Between monopolistic and oligopoly, oligopolies have considerable market influence. Okay, firms in oligopoly have market power, mm -hmm. meaning they can influence prices and output levels. And examples of these industries include your automobile, airline, telecom, where a small number of firms are there, but they control a significant share of the market. So the correct answer is oligopoly where each firm holds a significant share of total output. Question 10. Mr. Das is in the habit of saving money in various financial institutions for future prospects. Which function of money is most closely linked to his savings? We know that these are different functions of money. Medium of exchange, store of value, measure of value, unit of account. What do you think is the correct answer? I'll give you a second. The correct answer is store of value. Let's understand why. If you look at medium of exchange, what is that function? That function allows money to be used for buying and selling goods or services, but does not relate to savings in any way. If we look at measure of value, this refers to money serving as a unit for pricing goods and services, not for storing value. You also learn another function, which is unit of account. Unit of account function tells us that money acts as a standard for recording and comparing value but again it does not explain the savings behavior. What about store of value? Store of value means that it retains money retains its purchasing power over time and can be saved for future use. So the correct answer is store of value as it best describes the saving money feature of future use. I hope this is clear. These functions are again very important from money chapter. You should revise them properly. How did you do? Let me know your score in the comments. I hope you got all 10 correct. Check for other related practice videos where you will find past papers as well as more MCQs. If you found this video useful, do share with your friends and juniors even for next year. See you soon.